All right, folks, so in today's video, we're gonna take a little bit of a look at this antenna tuner that we use for ham radio. It's an ATU 100. A couple things I wanted to mention real quick is this is based off of an open source design by N7 at DDC. Thank you very much, N7 DDC, for your contributions. This is awesome. These uh, tuners come in a variety of different flavors uh, and different interpretations, and you can buy them as kits or you can buy them as assembled units. Both the kits and the assemble units vary greatly in terms of price and quality of components and quality of construction. Now, I had been looking around for a while for one of these that I believed was a better unit. Some of the ways that uh, you can tell or some of the things that you'll see is, is that the number of buttons. So this has all of the buttons on the front of the screen and takes advantage of the full features of the board. Uh, sometimes you can buy these, they'll just have the tune button. Uh, sometimes they won't have a power button, they'll have an internal battery. Uh, sometimes they'll have a different display. This is, I think, a 0.96 um, LED. OLED, it's an OLED screen. Um, sometimes you can get an LED screen that's of two by 16 characters. Uh, so it varies greatly. Um, you can also get them with these uh, PL259 connectors or you can get them with SMA. Uh, here's the DC input in the, in the ground jack. It's a pretty basic uh, design, but uh, what I like about it is, and I, I bought one of the kits as well, is that it's something that's fun to tinker around with, mess around with. If it breaks, it can be repairable, or you can expand or modify it uh, quite easily. And they're relatively inexpensive. Now, this was one of the more expensive models that I saw. It was $95. Uh, I did get it on Amazon as opposed to ordering off of something like AliExpress uh, or Banggood. What I've seen is, is that some of the models that are coming off the Chinese site have a little bit more dubious quality uh, than this particular one right here. Um, it didn't come with a whole lot of documentation. In fact, it only came with this piece of paper. And when I was looking through here, uh, one of the things I noticed is it has something called test mode. And it says I uh, press bypass and auto to get to the test mode. What we're going to do today is we're going to put this in test mode and uh, we're going to play around with it a little bit with a nano VNA and, uh, and a power meter because we want to do some testing. And uh, we're going to see what happens. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the test setup that we have here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go from left to right uh, because it'll be easy and I won't forget anything if I do that. So here we have a Nano VNA and this is the H4 Nano VNA. And folks might say, well, why are you using the H4? It's because it was uh, the closest Nano VNA when I started setting this up. And I have a USB-C cable that comes in here and plugs into the Nano VNA because we're gonna look at the output in Nano VNA Saver because it's a little bit easier than trying to zoom in on the screen. Uh, and then we have our S21 is connected in through the antenna port and our S11 parameter is coming in through the RF or where you would hook up your radio into the AT100. Here's the power cable for the AT100. Um, I know people are going to get upset and oh, look at all those adapters, I hate that's messing it up. It's really not that big of a deal. And uh, here's, here's the front of the panel of the ATU100. And when I have it set in here, uh, we have another camera. Let's just go ahead and turn that on, oh boy. And we'll be able to take a look at, uh, get a better look at the front panel as we're going ahead and we're doing stuff. Okay, the power cable comes out and it is running through this PowerWorks meter. And the reason we're doing that is, is that we're gonna wanna take a look at our power consumption on this device. Um, because I've heard, I've heard various things, and as you can see, as I mess with this, this is going on and off, so we're going to have to check our connections. And then everything here is powered off of the Ampere Time uh, LifePo 4. It's a 12 volt, 12 amp hour battery that I like a lot. So let's go ahead and do some testing. I'm going to get this all fired up and in Nano VNA Saver, and we'll be right back. So here we are with Nano VNA Saver, and there's a couple things I want to do. The, uh, the first one I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about what we have up in the top left-hand corner in our sweep control. So we're doing a 49 megahertz sweep running from 1 megahertz all the way to 50 megahertz for a stop. The reason we're doing that is that is the effective range of the ATU100. And then over on the right-hand side, we have two different charts. We have our S21 gain, which is how we're going to measure insertion loss. And then we have an S11 VSWR. Now, we're not really set up to measure the SWR um, with this, but I just have it up here because people like to take a look at it. We might throw a dummy load on this tuner and then take a look at VSWR that way, um, but I'm not 100% sure we're going to do that or not. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn myself off because uh, that'll probably make everybody much happier. And then I'm going to turn on the camera so you can see the front of the ATU. Now, we just booted this ATU into normal mode. And uh, what you can see here is that um, everything is set at zeros. And when I take a look at my um, marker that I have on the um, S21 gain chart, you can see that the, um, the uh, S21 gain right here is just about negative dB, and that is at 30 megahertz. Um, and when I look at this, I, I think that it should be flat all the way across, right? Like we shouldn't get any return loss. Now I can put the tuner into bypass mode and we're running a continuous sweep. So this is constantly sweeping. Um, I don't see any difference. And what I would expect is to see a little bit of, is maybe a little bit of return loss as we get higher in frequency, but not that big dip that we're seeing there that goes down below um, 8 dB, 8 dB of, return, of insertion loss. I might be saying return, but I mean insertion loss is, um, is significant. Now that may be a result of uh, reactants inside this tuner. So you can see when I touch it, things change. You see that? So that's a, that's a little bit odd in and of itself. What I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to turn this off and then I can go into a test mode if I turn this on while pressing these two buttons. And then you can see on the screen that we've entered into test mode. Now what's unique about test mode is I can use the auto and the bypass buttons to adjust reactants. Uh, first, we're going to adjust um, our inductance. And so when I hit this button, you can see my inductance goes up uh, on, the, on this screen here. And then you can also see the impact or the effects that's having from a insertion loss standpoint on the S21 gain chart. Now a long press of this green button will allow me to go in and start to make modifications to my capacitance. And as I do that, you can continue to see changes here. And that's how the tuner actually tunes by varying the inductance and capacitance by using a series of relays in here. Now inside this box, there's a bunch of induction coils and then there are some capacitors. And then there are a series of, I think it's 14 relays. Uh, it's actually 15 relays. And each one of those relays will do a combination of the capacitors and the inductors to come up with a match for your, your antenna and your radio. This test mode, as I understand it, is a way for people like me to go in here and test to make sure that we are adding and removing capacitance and inductance manually in a test to make sure that the, uh, the insides, the innards, the parts in this uh, tuner are working correctly. This tuner is often sold as a kit, so this is a handy feature for kit builders to make sure that everything is working. I am a little bit concerned, though, <laughs> about, that, uh, about that insertion loss. I'd like to see that be a little bit flatter. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal because I believe that when this tuner actually tunes to a desired frequency, that's going to diminish significantly. So what I want to do now is I just want to uh, turn this off and I want to come back up in bypass mode. So now we are just in our in a regular boot, and then when I hit this button, we go to bypass, and that's what that dash is for. And so this means that we are skipping all of the inductors, and we are uh, skipping all of the capacitors. And we can see that that's still there. What I want to do now is I want to test the, um, the uh, SWR. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this dummy load, and I'm going to disconnect the nano VNA uh, secondary port, the the S21 port, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this, this uh, dummy load in and see what happens. Okay, so we have the dummy load in place, and then there you can see that our SWR still peaks around that 35 megahertz, uh, which isn't really a handband, so I don't know how, how much of an issue that is. And, and look, when I touch this thing, it, uh, it, definitely does, uh, it definitely reacts. So let's go ahead and let's boot back into test mode. There we go. And uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a Smith chart real quick. Okay. So there's a Smith chart and uh, that is a little bit of a goofy curve that we have there. Um, but what I want to do is I, I want to kind of play with this and see if we can add capacitance or inductance and, and then get this closer to a, uh, a one to one or 50, 50 ohms, um, no reactants. Let's see what we can do here. So you can see as I increase inductance, that circle, well, it was getting smaller. And 
Now what we're doing is we're adding capacitance. Well, there you go. That uh, That's pretty good. So what you can see is, is that we've actually canceled out all of our inductance, and we have some capacitance there, 47 picofarads. Um, if you take a look up in our marker table up there, you can see the, the VSWR, SWR is 1.02, uh, which is pretty good. So we were able to manually tune this and test everything out uh, to get a match to our 50 ohm load, and that's likely what would happen uh, with an antenna. Okay, the last thing that I wanted to show today was, let's see if i got to move some stuff around, is this uh, PowerWorks uh, meter that we have here. Because some folks were saying that this, um, this device draws a significant amount of current. And I'm just not seeing that. So what I want to do is, um, don't worry about the SWR chart. What I'm going to do is I'm just uh, running up the inductance here. So using more and more of the relays. And this is a, um, the, the way that this works is these relays require constant power. So you have latching and non-latching. These are non-latching relays that require power. So when you turn this uh, tuner off, they lose their setting. If your relays are latched, like in an LDG tuner, you can turn it off and on and the, um, the setting will persist. It doesn't here. So you can see as I'm using uh, assumably more and more of the relays that uh, my draw is going up, but 0.1 amps is not really significant uh, from my perspective. Let's go ahead and uh, turn up the capacitance as well and see if we can get that any higher. So, I mean, for the sake of argument, let's just call it, there we go, 1.5, um, I'm sorry, 0.15 amps. Nah, I'm not real worried about that. All right, folks, I think that's going to wrap it up. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks.